Hello and welcome to section three of uh, Idle Force Specialist High Velocity IT Certification Training Program from One World Training. In this section, we will look at the fundamental concepts for delivering HVIT. Understand principles, models, and concepts like ethics, safety culture, lean culture, Toyota Kata, lean, agile, resilient, and continuous aspects or characteristics and approaches for HVIT, service dominant logic, design thinking, and complexity thinking. We'll also know how to use principles, models, and concepts to contribute to accepting ambiguity and uncertainty, to be trust and be trusted, to continually raise the bar, to help get customers jobs done, and to commit to continual learning. These five here listed on the right are the key behaviors required for HVIT. So we're going to look at how these principles, models and concepts contribute to establishing and maintaining these five key behaviors of HVIT. The five key behaviors for high velocity IT. These are accept ambiguity and uncertainty, trust and be trusted, continually raise the bar, help get customers jobs done and commit to continual learning. These five key behaviors reflect organizational needs and practitioners aspirations because people want to do worthwhile things to learn and improve and to be recognized. Therefore, these are not unique to high velocity IT. However, this particular combinations appeals to people who understand the digitally ent enabled enterprise. What do these behaviors mean? Accept ambiguity and uncertainty. This is about favoring experimentation and not to be afraid to fail safely. Note these meanings very carefully. These are important for the exam. So once again, accepting ambiguity and uncertainty is about favoring experimentation and not to be afraid to fail safely. Continually raising the bar is about proactively spotting and making the improvements, however small they are. Helping them to get customers job done is about helping somebody solve their problems and become what they want to become and also recognizes how customers feel. So both of the behaviors at the top, accepting ambiguity and uncertainty, as well as continually raising the bar do connect to improvements but continually raising the bar focuses on making improvements proactively, even if small, whereas ambiguity and uncertainty is about doing experimentation because of complex environments and experimenting and not to be afraid to fail in those experiments in a safe manner. Trust and be trusted. Respect professional skills and trust people to make decisions. Be considerate to fellow human beings, inclusiveness and safety, reducing stress. Provide honest but considerate feedback. Sharing the knowledge. These are the elements of trusting and being trusted. Committing to continual learning. It is about not to be ignorant, data-driven experiments challenge and improve hypothesis. Short feedback loops are key to learning. Let us practice some questions on these five key behaviors. Number two, an organization is undergoing a digital transformation and is encouraging the adoption of new behavior patterns. An investigation has revealed that some team members avoid experimentation and prefer to search or wait for a single correct solution. Which two key behaviors are most likely to be affected by this attitude? Accept ambiguity and uncertainty. Commit to continual learning. Help customer get customer's jobs done. Trust be and be trusted. You have to select two of these options to meet that behavior. The situation is about encouraging the adoption of new behaviors, which includes uh, allowing people to experiment because in the current situation, people are avoiding experimentation. Accepting ambiguity and uncertainty. Experimentation is important for acceptance of uncertainty and continual learning. Therefore, this is correct. It is important to favor experimentation and not to be afraid to fail safely and mindfully under this behavior. Practitioners therefore should not be scared of the unknown. They should be able to accept that things are not perfect 
and have techniques to deal with that. Number two, committing to continual learning. It is important that practitioners commit themselves to continual learning and improving their knowledge and the level of information they have. Once again, data-driven experiments can be used to challenge and improve the hypothesis. So one and two are definitely valid. Let's look at three and four. Help get customer's job done. Experimentation is less important to get, get the customer's job done. This is about um, acceptance of ambiguity and uncertainty where experimentation is necessary. Number three, helping get customer's job done is about understanding how customers feel and helping them to solve their problems and become what they want to be. Trust and be trusted is about the trust being considerate to fellow colleagues, providing honest feedback, etc. Therefore, the correct answer here would be the combination of one and two, and that is uh, option A. Let us try another question on the five behaviors of HVIT. A business analyst has recognized that business managers have conflicting hypotheses about their needs for departmental improvement. They're also finding it difficult to articulate their requirements. Which approach is best for obtaining requirements? Conduct an interview based on a carefully prepared script of detailed questions. Allocate a week to analyze how the department works and then make logical conclusions. Develop multiple prototypes of a possible solution and adopt what works best. Ask the director to enforce what the business analyst considers to be the most plausible solution. This is a more complex question. In fact, the question relates to one of the behaviors required in an HVIT environment where there are conflicting hypotheses and uh, about how to improve departmental needs and uh, difficulty in articulating the requirements. When in such a situation, it's about uh, ambiguity and the behavior required would be to accept ambiguity and uncertainty. And in such a case or situation, fail safe experimentation and hypothesis must be used. And a good example of an experiment is option C, to develop multiple prototypes of a possible solution and adopt what works best. However, this question is more in depth. It also connects with the Quinevin framework, which we will discuss afterwards in another section. So for now, let us take it a simple approach to answering this question. Before we go and understand more about the Quinevin framework, Continuing on principles, models, and concepts. Ethics. Ethics is a system of principles which defines what is good for individuals and the society. Digital organizations have a moral obligation to consider how they apply IT beyond their direct economic interests. Ethics. Education, learning lessons from software development, trusted and collaborative organization design leads to ethical practices. Machine learning can amplify human biases Turing board, for example, that learned hate speech from social media. Emotional intelligence needs to be developed in people before programming it in technology. Creation and use of information related to people needs to be done ethically. The software development lesson could be related to data protection. Note that social media video platforms may be misused. Gaming technology may introduce aggressive behaviors. The internet is having a profound effect on human society. The full impact is not knowable. Must pay attention to ethics in daily work and in the big picture. Tolerate failure to encourage learning in a no blame environment. Cannot force ethics on people with policy alone. Ethics education must be part of all core training, including workshops and exploration of scenarios. Measure and monitor attitudes to ethical behavior. Recruitment policies and procedures should focus on ethics understanding. Include ethics in retrospectives and lessons learned. Design organizations to encourage collaboration and visibility. Behavior patterns for ethics. 
think about how your actions affect others. Establish general ethical principles. Accept that ethical principles just help to clarify specific situations. Discuss dilemmas, however, and take responsibility for choosing the least bad course of action.